Hey guys, this is Levik and welcome back to our series about Tinto Talks. So, Dev Diaries about not announced yet game that we all know by now is EU5. Today we'll talk about something very important to steer and manage your mainly internal politics but also other aspects of the game. So the policies and laws. They are completely reworked compared to what we've seen in EU4 and I think we are going to the good direction, but let's see if these words are proven in the dev diary. So what's the difference between a law and a policy? The easiest explanation is that a law will have, let's say, a law about uh, your dynasty and succession, so this is a law, we have multiple policies to choose from. So you see that currently most countries start with about 12 to 15 laws that they have policies on from the start. And there are about 40 more laws that appear over a game. So if we say that, uh, let's say there are four policies per law, we can expect around even 200 of policies in the game. But of course, it's just a guess from my side. So you see the laws will be also sorted into different categories. So for example, we've got administrative laws, we've got administrative system, this is the law, and then a policy is feudal administration, there's uh, feudal de jure laws, legal court and royal court customs, and as I said, there'll be more unlocked over the game. Yes, yes, you see also religious laws and probably much more. There'll be also a very big difference between enacting a new law and changing the existing one, because a new law, you just have to throw money in it. It's something new, nobody cares that much. But changing a policy that is already in place, oh man, that's not gonna be easy. You're gonna lose 100 stability, and remember, stability goes from minus 100 to 100, so you lose half of possible uh, stability. But at the same time, if you have high cram power, it's gonna be a bit lower, but with low cram power, it's gonna be much more costful. But there's a one simple trick that allows you to change a policy without going into giga instability. Just call in parliament, of course, if that's part of your government, and you might convince the parliament to pass a law, but probably at some cost. Another very important and I think a good improvement compared, for example, to EU4, is that you lose previous policy bonuses immediately, but a bonus for a new policy, it will take time to get to a full amount. Interestingly, not only countries have laws, also mentioned in some previous dev diaries, international organizations will have their own laws. So, for example, the whole Euro emperor can pass some specific laws to the princes of the empire. One of the big feedbacks about EU4 is just stacking modifiers, which, which is cool in some way, but it makes the game really much easier, um, at least for experienced players. So laws besides stacking modifiers uh, will also allow you to unlock new mechanics or simply impact your estates or your societal values. As remember, this were the, god damn it, I forgot the name, Suvaki, the uh, sliders like in uh, very similar to EU3. Some examples, well, you see some uh, uh, laws about your levies, where you have a choice between three policies. There were as inclusive levies, and that is uh, increasing the amount of levies from different cultures. There's noble levies that is giving you more levies from your nobles. And there's peasant levies that is giving you more peasants levies. But you see 20% of nobles, in most of the cases, would be actually much less than 2% of the peasants. And I love this comment. Is there a way to kill nobles more efficiently? You remember naval doctrines is a cool feature from EU4 that is there for a while, I think since Rule Britannia. Fun fact, it was the first DLC I received from Paradox as a creator. And uh, there will be also a, a thing in EU5 just as a law where different doctrines will be a policy to choose from. There are some examples of a legal code, so you can choose between civil law, common law or traditional law, with each one of these giving you different modifiers. And there you go, more efficient government or more happy states. There will be also press law to choose between censored, free and state press only, and we might be probably almost sure that it's not something that will be at the start of the game, but rather something that you unlock over the game going. And about that, there will be a building called local newspaper that could be built by the estates if you give them free law, but 
What can go wrong with that? A lot about uh, what religion your heirs can have? Is it any religion? And you see that might make clergy a bit unhappy. Is it the same religion, making them more happy? Or is it the same religious group? So we actually accept heretics and this will make clergy unhappy but not as much as any religion speaking of heirs as you see succession law is a mechanic that is not technically a law but uses another mechanic primarily because we want to always ensure that it's valid and enforcing country to always have one this special law is very much dependent on government type we have lots of unique ones like the papal conclave that's gonna be interesting when the pope dies the cardinals gather to debate who will be the new pope this can be quick, but sometimes might take several years, so also completely different and more realistic compared to EU4, where one pop dies immediately, like literally the same second, we've got the new one. No, 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 this is gonna be much more interesting, and I'm really curious how the Cardinals themselves are gonna work. They evolve a lot through the history of EU4. Uh, some of you might remember that in the first version of EU4, you just had to, like, spend papal power to get a cardinal to you, right now it's a bit better, and maybe this is gonna be even better for U5. But yeah, this is it for today, and as uh, we still have some time, I want to go through right now the most key comments under this dev diary because we've got 22 pages of comments so switching between government types is made through laws right or there are government reforms like in uniform 4 or is it handled different way entirely it will be a different way entirely will there be eu4 style of mission system or hoi4 style focus system in this game neither more similar to imperators which is a 2.0 hybrid of this two so just to remind you i know that i, I got a lot of hate on imperator or mission trees you are just talking about the base because that yeah the missions themselves in Imperator were sometimes too boring. That's why there is Invictus mode that makes them much more interesting. But what I like about the mission trees from Imperator Rome is that uh, let's say you start as uh, Rome, right? And when you're starting as Rome, you have a few different mission paths that you want to go through, like you like Italy, you fight Carthage, blah 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 blah. And depending what you choose, you unlock a small mission tree to complete to get uh, a specific bonus. You can abort that mission tree if you don't want to go through it anymore, or you can just continue until you finish the whole tree to get the final bonus. Once I complete this mission tree, or once you form a different nation, you can unlock more mission trees. So you can count this like a branches in EU4, but they are uh, not like linked to each other that much. Will there be more naval laws related to cultures like we have in doctrines in U4? Yes, many unique per attack and per cultures coming. This is about comments on drawbacks of the newspaper. I think press should amplify the stability effect on this location. And it does, uh, because it increases literacy, which means that impacts how people are impacted by the, for example, price changes. Will these laws be voted by the council? or just implement with no effect on your councillors. This is not CK3, parliament and or the ruler decides. This is not CK3. Remember guys, a lot of you are like moaning about too much about char characters. This is just a small addition playing in the background for the game for more flavor. But it, this is not character based game like CK3 is. Will there be multiple types of feudalism? Multiple types of subjects? Yes. Will it be possible to create own religions? Somebody's playing too much of CK3, or was it just cultures? Only historical religions will exist, and I think that's also the same for the cultures. Can a rebellion be dedicated to changing a country's laws? In theory, yes. So we might read as in theory, yes, but we did not implement that in game yet. I think this is one of the most important comments, and I want to read most of it. Nosgov Kingdom is really saying that he's being hyped up because the dev diary actually shows more informative stuff than the guy expected from the laws and policies. And it's very important that there are, that there are trade offs of changing your policies. So, what Johan is saying that if he's not taking any credit for this decision to have uh, like drawbacks for the changes and uh, the stuff that it takes time to implement a change in your law, privilege, etc. I was uh, suggested by one of the content designers, Marcus, who suggested during one of the weekly brainstorming sessions. And I want to read this. 
We work with the game design a bit differently here at Tinto, where we have no dedicated game designers ideas guys, but everyone can and do shape the features to the game. I'm there to make sure we follow the vision we set out and be able to make the final yes no decision. But Project Caesar is truly a collaborative design effort by our great teams here in Sitges. So not only based on this but all, all of these dev diaries that happened so far was like 15 of them. I'm starting to believe this release I'm not gonna say it's gonna be successful, but it's having a much higher chance of being successful compared to Victoria, Imperator, City Skylands, which is just released by Parox, it's not developed by Parox. Um, CK3 was a bit better, but also much better than CK3. I'm not gonna say my, my words, but I'm just having high hopes and I'm in general optimist. I know you guys will give a lot of negative feedback that nah, it's Parox, it's not gonna work, but. I have a warm heart that it's gonna work. I'm not a zealous 3D hater, but honestly, this look awful, especially the babies. I look at that. The babies are richer to the image. <laughs> so people will hate 3D images while looking at the 2D images here. Can we expect the Inquisition as part of religious wars? Religious laws. There is an Inquisition law with five different policies, of which I some are common for all the Catholic countries and some are unique and of course there's a Spanish one as everyone expected. That is really interesting so the guys uh, say, asking if there will be any laws that are setting up interactions between settlers and natives. It was some kind of feature in EU4 like you know the free buttons that you assimilate them faster, you don't have rebels or just the coins grow faster. I'm really hoping to be it to be more in-depth decision in uh, EU5 and Johan is saying that there Pavia sorry Pavia is saying that there will be such a decision I'm really looking forward for the dev die on the colonization this is also very uh, good questions and answers from Johan and it's again showing how differently this game is developed how they are listening to feedback so first question can laws be forced for the estates if they are powerful if they are powerful yes can a law change caused by revolts? We just talked about this. Not yet implemented, but they're thinking about it. And three, can I force law changes for war, like abolishing slavery or ending serfdom? Good idea, something we could add to later ages. <laughs> I also love this. Ooh, why do these babies look so inbred? Well, maybe that's more freaking for the game. It's a 2D image. A question about successions in the Ottoman Empire? And Spavio is saying, I will say that Turkish successions will be bloody. It's already in the game mechanics. My understanding how they approach in this game, and that will be my final comment to this dev diary, is that you could feel from some of the past if, uh, paradox releases that they were rift holding with adding some content with a thought, we'll add it in the future DLC. Here, it seems more like they want to add as much flavor or mechanic wise and uh, regional and country wise to just make it 18 not 15 to just make it a good release let's just hope that you not add too much at the same time and we're gonna get a game with a lot of bugs because this is a big risk if you go for too much of a content but I already told you that I'm optimist. But if the, and with this optimistic comment, I'm gonna tell you guys. Please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna see you in the different videos. Bye bye.